Okay, congratulations. You finally received your naturalization appointment notice and you are excited and you are wondering what the process is going to be like and you want to know what to expect. You are locked into the right channel. Just watch this. I'm going to walk you through all because I went through it all and I have the right information to give you. The name is Priscilla Kuma, registered nurse based in, the, in New York State, in USA. And thanks for subscribing. I'm so grateful for all, all of my subscribers. You're the reason I keep going. Share my videos, subscribe, and I'll bring you more information. Yes. So, you will send in your N-400 form, your naturalization application, and you finally have a letter to come for an interview to become a U.S. citizen. That is a big deal. So, yep, congratulations. You are very close to the end. It's a long process of paperwork upon paperwork, and it's expensive, and you have to be driving back and forth for your fingerprints and all that stuff. The very last biometric fingerprint you go take, they're going to give you a naturalization book. I'm sure you have that in front of you. It is how it looks like. What does it say? Preparing for the naturalization test. A pocket study. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Yes. So before I go on, you need to go to the USCIS website. I believe you've already been there multiple times. I believe you have an account online. Just make sure you read the most current information because they keep updating stuff especially because of this pandemic they keep changing certain things and certain protocols so you want to be up to date and know what the new trend is and prepare along that line yes a lot of things have changed due to covid and it has favored a lot of people so now all the informations are online they encourage you to actually have a uscis account online then you can access all the information the timeline is there and as they work and process your form they keep updating you and telling you what stage your form has gotten to so you have a letter now in front of you you have a date and time to show up and that is a big deal so normally you want to show up 15 minutes before your interview they wouldn't allow you into the building until it's time for your appointment and you want to show up alone unless you have an attorney or you have a disability and there's somebody helping you maybe you are visually impaired and somebody drove you there and has to assist you into the building Yes, that is what's going to happen. There are so many checkpoints. So as soon as it's 15 minutes to your appointment time that you have on the letter, you want to bring out your appointment letter with the date and time. You want to bring out your green card and also your ID card. It can be a driver's license or a passport. So that is the first thing they're going to check at the desk and make sure you have a right appointment to be in that building. If not, trust me, they would not even speak to you without an appointment. They're going to send you out, out there. I was right there when somebody came with the appointment and they told the person you can't even cross that line. You have to be sent out. So make sure you go based on the time they gave you. 15 minutes you can enter the building. Then, just like the airport, you're going to take all the jackets and uh, phones and watches, shoes. You take everything. They're going to scan all. Make sure you're not carrying any ammunition, any knife, gun, anything at all, any chemicals into the building. They will check all that. And make sure you are totally strict, checked and frisk well before you go into the building. Then you're going to have another checkpoint where you stop and do another fingerprint. And they'll take a photo of you and give you a number to wait. So they're going to use that number to call you or they might even call you by name. Yes. And you have to be very ready. So this booklet is going to be all you're going to need. It keeps changing and they keep adding new additions to it. So based on the time you are going to go, this video might be so old to you by the time you're watching it. So watch the most current requirements. All the information are on the USCIS website. They have the online form. This booklet is online where you can read it. And they have the hard copies, the pockets. They call it a packet study where you can be moving around in town. You have in your pocket, you can open and look at the questions. So they have 100 questions in here. I don't know what standard is not food for sure because I'm not all about food. <laughs> Just by the way. So they have the very last question here is 100. They have the very last question here is question 100. So you have to study all these questions. And mostly there are various options to the answers. Like they say, 
what are two cabinet level positions they've listed a lot of cabinet level positions secretary of agriculture secretary of commerce secretary of defense secretary of education you just need to know two or three so if they say what are two you just have to mention exactly two you cannot go beyond that if they ask for one you give them one some of them have one answer if the president can no longer serve who becomes the president it's just vice president one option but if you have questions that have multiple answers you want to choose one under our constitution some powers belong to the federal government what is one power of the federal government to print money to declare war to create an army to make treaties so you just have to study it a couple if they ask you for one you give them one and move on so this booklet is going to be your lifesaver world war one world war two civil war everything you need is in here so this they would have given to you when you went for your last fingerprint they give you this and tell you that wait for your letter so you have this booklet the letter has come and you have a date then you are now going to study this and go and go for your interview so you are the building they've checked you you have a number they sit you sit down they call you in and um when they call you in the officer before you even sit down the officer is gonna how are you and uh just stand and swear so you raise your right hand finger and repeat after him or he'll say certain stuff then you say i i will or whatever he says just to make sure that everything you're going to say that day is truthful you're not going to lie and it's a true representation of yourself and all that yes so the form you applied the form is sent to them the n400 form that you use to apply for naturalization that form the whole package that you fill with a pen and signed it's in front of the officer so he's just going to go through every single thing that you said on the paper and make sure it corresponds to what you are going to say so he's going to read the first line your name your full name is this the right order is this your middle name is this your date of birth is this your place of birth is this your parents name is this your maiden name is this your husband's name is this your ex-husband's name is this your children's name you read every single question because that is the point at which you make any corrections going forward because it's the legal document and they want to fix it if they are spelling mistakes in your name that is the point you want to correct it and if you want to add another name or delete a name they ask you if you want to change your name this is the right time to do so i didn't change my name i just left it aside not to not to complicate my story yes so they have different sections they have a written section they have a reading section and they have questions that he will ask you and you would answer and these are the hundred questions that are in here they can pick any random questions the goal is for you to pass six out of ten questions is the pass mark so when he asks a question who did the united states fight in the world war ii germany japan italy you choose one before Eisenhower was a president, he was a general. Which war was he in? When you answer six questions correctly, he's not going to proceed and ask you all the ten. But if you missed one or two, you have to ask the ten and make sure you pass six out of ten. Luckily for me, I passed all the first six questions. Yay! I passed all the first six questions right away, so he didn't have to go and ask all the ten. Then he moved to written. So there's something written on an iPad before you. He asked me to read it, so I read it correctly then he read another sentence for me to write do you get it there was something written you have to read to him he says there's something on your screen can you read that for me please then you read it to him who did the united states fight in the world war ii then he asked you another one again relating to the same thing united states fought germany in world war ii write that down for me so you take your pen and write on the ipad united states fought Germany in World War Two, we and put the punctuation. So on the letter that you, you received, there are certain things that you have to bring with you to your interview. Your passport, if you are coming there because of your marriage, you have your marriage certificate. You have the uh, the names and certificates of your kids. Whatever you put on your application, your N four hundred application form. Those are the things you are expected to bring to your interview. You have to have everything up to date. And you can also have a copy of the form that you filled because there are some questions you answer no 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 have you ever joined a group have you ever joined this have you ever fought this you have to have those questions with you because the officer is going to go through all these questions with you and 
because of COVID, a lot of things have changed, so you can have a regular old ceremony. But if you do change your name in the office, your old ceremony has to be done by a judge so that it will appear on your naturalization certificate or else it will be deemed invalid. So you can have an interpreter with you or have them by phone to help answer your questions. Some people have waivers of the English test, so you have to use somebody who speaks your language to help you go to the English test. You have to have preparations for that. The person has to sign a form and they have to approve it before that person can help you during the interview. But it is best if you can do it all by yourself because the person can will not be allowed into the room. So after you pass your test, now with COVID, a lot of things have changed. So I had my old ceremony that very day where I got my um, naturalization certificate. Yes, the photo up there, as you can see, yay. So you might have you might have to receive a letter later and come for another date before you get your old ceremony done but i had it on that day so it was very quick for me and if you do not pass they will let you know you have to retake it between 30 to 90 days and you have to pass because you only have one chance to retake it and pass it so the old ceremony you just swear that you abide by the laws you be a good citizen and you say congratulations then you wait for your certificate for a couple minutes 20 30 because remember they took a photo and you did a fingerprint when you enter the building so that photo they're going to put and give you a naturalization certificate so this is just a copy of how my naturalization certificate looks like yeah this is a brief copy and they give you a packet that packet tells you what you have to do i'm going to bring that in another video but one of the things you have to do is to get a u.s passport which i did yay so you need to follow all the instructions at the website. Thanks for watching my video. I bring you more nursing, naturalization stuff, travel, food vlog, and the name remains with Lakuma. Please share this video for other people who are wondering how citizenship process looks like. Take care and I love you. Bye-bye.